What's going on, everybody? I recorded this already, but I was so overtired. I was on no sleep that when I watched it the next day, it was pretty trash. I didn't cover enough. We basically just gave one line, no variations, and called it a day. Which the odds of them following that line are minuscule, so that whole video is just a waste of time. I'm going to branch off and show you, keep it a little shorter, but show you more variations in the overall theme of what to do. So this is the advanced variation. E4, C6, D4, D5, E5, Bishop F5. Hopefully it's the last time I gotta say this because we're, I think we're done with uh, the advanced variations. We might have one more quick one after here. So the tail variation is, we've covered everything else. We've covered this, we've covered this, we've covered this, we've covered uh, this, we've covered a lot of things. So the last one, I'm pretty sure, is the tail variation. It's the H-pawn. We already discussed what they're attempting to do. They're attempting to trap your bishop. If you don't take care of it and you were to like, close the structure, your bishop is gone. You see the computer analysis jump from 3.3 to 4. It's because your bishop is going to die. Uh, their move would be here. More or less, you got two options. Here which they're just going to close it up, and then you got one option here, and then it's totally done. Or you can do it in the opposite order. Go here, close it down, then go here. And either way, your bishop is trapped. So the old way to fix that was to push h6, you know, creating yourself a little hole to tuck in. But that allows white to push h5, taking away this square from you, the g6 square. So the new method people have been trying is actually just pushing h5. Now they can't push up their h-pawn to h5, and you will forever have that square, and it's not taken from you. So from here, white's got a couple options. Uh, the strongest would be bishop moves. The crazy one would be bishop to g5, uh, pinning this pawn you can't move up this pawn anymore because you know, your queen's there and if you did something like develop a different piece now you got this pawn marching up and it's going to mess up your weak f pawn whether you capture it or if you had a different move uh pushing it up regardless it's it's ugly it messes up your pawn structure so your best bet is to move the queen and their B pawn is weak. So just like a couple of the other versions, uh, queen to B6 is a great move. It attacks their D pawn and B pawn. So they could obviously march here. That perfectly fixes it up fine. Uh, the most aggressive move would be to bring the bishop out. If they do, I would don't go for the, the cheap pawn. Uh, they're going to you know get your bishop and... You know, a rook just ain't worth it. They got too much too much firepower on you. Uh, so you want to capture their bishop. And when they recapture with your queen, or their queen, still don't take that pawn. If you take that pawn, uh, they're going to come in and march uh, this pawn up. I know the computer said three and five, but it'll drop significantly once it figures it out. Um, and if you did something smart, like tried taking the rook, it's going to come over with their queen, and now they're attacking your b-pawn. And even if you tried sliding out somehow, uh, you know, they're going to come in, and it, it's, they're all up in your Kool-Aid. It's not going to be good. So that's a poison pawn. Don't take that b-pawn right here. No, 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 no. You want to attempt to trade off the queens. And if they don't trade off the queen... Cool. If they do something like uh, uh, push this pawn or, you know, develop the bishop, fine. You know, if they did something like that, you capture their queen. Queen exchanges are good. And that's more or less what we want to cover in that line. Uh, if they did uh, capture your queen, obviously recapture with the knight, they're going to push this pawn and instead of capturing it, that would leave a horrible hole in your defense. Even though we did have this 
capture and pawn structure identical in a different variation, it's different. It's not good here. You want to push it up because not only does that gain a tempo because they have to move their bishop now, their bishop only has one good square here. And this is as far as we're going to discuss this line. So if they don't bring out their bishop, uh, this bishop, another good move that they have is bringing out the other bishop. And we'll cover a couple lines over here. Uh, what you want to do is you want to trade right away. You know, if, if you went here and they took, it'd be ugly pawn structure. It, it, you don't want to dodge. And if, if you went here, you'd be messing up your pawns. And even if you went here, you know, your rook's going to be ugly. And they can just gain tempo on you in a hundred different ways. And it's, it's not good. That's the new motto. Not good. So once they bring out the bishop, go ahead and take it. And when they recapture with the queen, you want to do the same thing. Queen exchange. Just like last version, when you took their bishop and they recaptured, you brought out your queen. You brought out your queen here last time. But their b-pawn is not weak, so you want to come in with a full check. They got a couple options. If it's perfectly fine for them to, you know, block it with a c-pawn or block it with a knight. If they block with a bishop attacking you, a6. Try to, try to get that queen trade again. If they take you, good. If they don't and they keep developing, you take them. Get those queens off the board in this version. And the super aggressive line would be some calculation pushing this pawn. Because they know if you take it, it comes with check. They can block it with the knight. And now they have an open B file. So on their next move, they can move over their rook. Attacking your queen and... Once you move your queen, your B pawn is exposed. So this is what I'm talking about. Check, take, and no one next move they're coming over with their rook. The only move that saves everything is E6. So therefore, when they come in with the rook, you can put your queen on E6, and it covers that B pawn. So they can't they no longer uh, come in and attack that. That's covered, and your queen... Is on a nice safe square. Um, from here, uh, really not too much to discuss. Um, they're gonna develop a knight, and since their knight is blocking their bishop, it'd be a good time for you to bring out the knight uh, and maneuver it to f5. Now their bishop's attacking you. Beautiful square. And when they bring it here, uh, more or less, eventually, you want to push the B pawn. You, wanna, you know, you want to take up that space. Uh, take up that space. So, this will basically cover as far as I want to go with this line. Uh, everything's all uh, cleared up. So, in the tail version, you know, they bring over that H pawn. You want to put a block to it over here. And regardless of what they do when they offer a bishop exchange, you want to take it. And at some point, you know, whether you put your bishop here or here, depending on which one is good for the line, you want to try to get a queen trade in. So, you know, once they block it, try to get that queen trade. And that covers more or less everything that we uh, have to discuss in the tail version. And that's all. That's uh, not heads or tails. Or Tail on the Donkey. It's talking about Mikhail Tail. He was an excellent uh, chess player from the Romantic area. Era, not area. The Romantic era. So, uh, that covers the Tail version. I think this video turned a lot better than uh, the last poor excuse for a video I came out with. And we're going to fly with it. I actually do think there's... Uh... <laughs> One more version we got to cover, honestly. Hmm. Yep. Not good. Not good at all. It's, uh, it's a gambit. It's more or less, it's not the advanced variation, but it is a gambit. 
And uh, there's actually a couple cool lines you got to watch out for. So I will see you on the next. Thanks.